We have two Bible readings from the prophet Isaiah and from the Gospel of Matthew. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For, as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across the shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning and a very Merry Christmas to everybody here at Carlton. Uh, a very Merry Christmas to those uh, listening and watching at Parkville and a very Merry Christmas to those listening and watching online. Uh, my name is John Forsyth, the vicar at St Jude's, and if you haven't got that perfect Christmas present yet, there are still a few signed photos available after the service. Uh, I'm willing to sign other things if, uh, if needed. I didn't even know I had a signed photo, so that's exciting news for me. Well, weary. Weary, I think, is a very good word to describe how I am feeling. Weary is a very good word to describe how my family are feeling. Weary, I would dare say, is a good word, if I'm educated in guessing what people feel at the moment, in what perhaps you feel at this moment. 2020, as we finish it, is the end of a very wearying year. And there are many reasons which we can kind of all relate to while this year has been a weary year. Even now, I'm still weary of wearing a mask and not seeing people face to face. 
trying to recognize people by their eyes alone. Weary of the isolation. Weary of missing friends and missing family. Weary of illness and stress. Weary of North Face jackets. Weary of being in another Zoom meeting and forgetting that you spent five minutes speaking on mute. Weary of a fractured and broken world. They are some of the external things, but I, I think perhaps some of us, for some of us, our exhaustion, our weariness it is perhaps more hidden. Weary due to our anxieties, our guilt, our failures, our broken relationships, and our sadness. But amongst these genuine and deep weariness, there actually is very good news this Christmas. Because in the Lord Jesus, our weary world can rejoice. Our weary world can rejoice. From our very first reading there, we had from Isaiah the prophet. It was written at a time where God's people in Judah were in great darkness, were weary. They faced the imminent threat of this huge superpower called the Assyrian Empire that was looming to take them over. But listen to these words from those opening verses. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the lands of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. And so while the times were genuinely dark and weary for God's people, what we see here is the light of hope beginning to dawn in the distance with the announcement, the birth announcement of a king. Now, one of the many things that I've missed during lockdown is the chance to see all the new babies being born. And for those who are watching online, I did manage to temporarily steal baby Lydia uh, and enjoy a uh, cuddle with her this morning. Uh, and these days, when you read the birth announcement, and it's usually on social media, although when I was young, as a small child, it was in the paper, uh, it tells you all this information about the baby. It usually starts with the baby's name, uh, the, the time that they were born, a, a couple of hundred photos, each slightly variation of, of a sleeping child. And for some very strange reason that I've yet to work out why, the baby's height and weight. That's the question that my wife, so to how, how, how tall was the baby? 53 centimetres. And not just in kilograms, but kilograms and pounds. It's very important that we understand both of those concepts. And I once thought it was strange if we did that for adults. You know, it's my birthday this week. I'm five foot ten and seventy-seven kilos. It's it's, it's straight, but it's what we do, right? We we want to know about this new child. But because of lockdown, I've yet to often meet these cute and gorgeous babies, and by the time I do, they seem old enough for school. But here's the thing, right? Every single birth announcement that I've seen, that I've read, was sent after the baby was born. Kind of obvious, right? You announce the birth of a baby that has been born. But the birth announcement in Isaiah is radically different because it's announced 700 years before the baby's born. 700 years before. For unto us, this is the good news in in verse 6, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And not only is this birth announcement given 700 years early, look at the names that this child, this king, is given. Now, most babies would have one, two, maybe if you're from a very fancy family, a hyphenated second name. But Isaiah announces the birth of this baby with four names. The poor child when they get to school, right? Look at those four names. He will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince 
of peace. See, one name is not sufficient to describe how special this child is. And moreover, these names tell us about what this child will do. Imagine a birth announcement that said, you know, future CEO of a major corporation, future Olympic swimmer, and excellent cello player. That would seem strange in a birth announcement. Birth announcements don't list accomplishments because as cute as babies are, they haven't really accomplished a lot. You know, a baby, uh, you know, a cute baby born, waking up all hours, crying and filling a nappy. That's, that's pretty much the accomplishment of a small child. But this baby is different. Wonderful counsellor. Those words tell us that this child will be a supernatural source of extraordinary wisdom. Incredible news for those seeking guidance. Mighty God tells us that this child will be divinely strong and powerful. Wonderful news for those who are weak and weary. Everlasting Father tells us that this child will care for his people forever as a gentle father cares for his children. Amazing news for those who are alone and unappreciated. Prince of Peace tells us that this child will bring deep and well-being and right relationships. Brilliant news for those of us who lack peace. Peace with each other and peace with God. All of this is good news for a weary world. But perhaps most shockingly and spectacularly is this. The names of this future king are all names associated with God. If you keep reading through Isaiah, you will see that each and every one of those names is attributed to God. And Isaiah guarantees that these things will happen, that this king will be born on the basis of God's passionate commitment to his people and his word. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And of course, the zeal of the Lord did do this. Seven hundred years later, God delivers on this birth announcement. A weary world which has been waiting for a long time, 700 years, rejoices that in the Lord Jesus, God fulfills each and every one of these promises. God came among us in the person of Jesus. He took on flesh in order to give us wisdom, protection, fatherly care and peace that we can enter into a perfect relationship with him. Good news for a weary world. And we see this too revealed in the names in Matthew chapter 1 that Jesus is given. Firstly, Emmanuel. We read in verse 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son And they will call him Emmanuel. And because we're not really cool with names, Matthew very helpfully explains what that means. God with us. Now many of us this year are grieving being separated from family and friends. We are unable to celebrate Christmas together. We are unable to hug. There was a a note in the newspaper, do not hug anyone from New South Wales. (laughs) I I thought that was just general advice. But no, no, it's specifically just for COVID, as someone from New South Wales. We We are mourning that we are separated from those we would normally have Christmas lunch together with. We're missing those smiles as presents are opened by small children and as families are united. And it's deeply sad because they are not with us. Yet in the midst of this genuine sadness, we can rejoice because God is with us. 
God doesn't do social isolation. There is no 1.5 meter rule when it comes to God. There are no border restrictions when it comes to God because his name is Emmanuel. God with us. And so our weary world can rejoice because we can celebrate that this God who created the universe, who, who calls each star out by name, who created planets and people, and loves us deeply, has come to us in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And born in humility as a baby, who could not speak or eat solid food or control his bladder, depended upon teenage parents for shelter, food, and love. Depend on a teenager. Just let that sink in. I know some teenagers who struggle to get up before lunch. Yet, in this tiny, helpless child, the ultimate authority over the whole universe resides. In this tiny, helpless baby, all the power of God dwells. And so our weary world can rejoice. God is not distant. God is not indifferent. God does not do social isolation. God has come to us in the person of the Lord Jesus. Great news for a weary world. But the question remains, well, why did the God of the universe leave his throne room? and come to be with us, and come to us in such an unusual manner? Well, the answer to that question is actually given to us in the second name that we read in the Gospel of Matthew, in verse 21 of chapter 1. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. See, our weary world can rejoice because Jesus is the saviour of the world. Literally, that's what his name means. Jesus literally means God saves. God saves. Somehow this tiny, helpless child is going to rescue helpless humanity and rescue it from the power of sin. Somehow this tiny infant child will be God's gift of rescue to a broken world because Jesus will fix our biggest problem what the scriptures call sin and at heart sin is our failure to recognize that God is the king the ruler of all sin is not doing uh, sorry not just doing bad things yes it certainly is doing bad things it's it's actually more than that it's actually a much deeper problem than that it's when we live a life that has no reference, no reverence to the one who created us and to the one who loves us. It's that image of living in darkness. But yet this Jesus, this tiny infant will somehow restore our relationship. For those of us walking in darkness, somehow we'll walk in light. And there is a certain irony here, because at Jesus' birth, he is announced as the saviour of the world. But it's actually in his death and resurrection that Jesus accomplishes this work, where he takes our place and suffers the cost of our rebellion against God. And as the cliche says, his birth tis the season but his death tis the reason. And the result of this astonishing truth is that we have peace with God. As Paul puts it in Romans 5, he says, therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'm not sure whether you are celebrating Christmas with your family or whether you are separated from your family this year. But the great news is that God adopts us into his family. We have peace with God. Truly a reason to rejoice. And this is one of the most beautiful gifts that God gives us this Christmas season. A deep and contented and lifelong peace that even 2020 can't take away. This peace, this peace from the Lord Jesus, it comes to us and it steadies us and it protects us from the exhausting effects of fear and anxiety and guilt. And so my prayer for all of us this Christmas is that as we finish this weary year, and it certainly has been a weary year, that we will rejoice in the presence and peace of the Lord Jesus as we celebrate his birth. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Amen.